coming up on this edition of Southwest TV News. Each year, numerous farm-related power line accidents occur across the province. And in 2018, 300 such accidents were reported, an increase of 40 from the previous year. Mold and other allergens are in abundance this time of the year and will increase in the coming months as the trees start to bloom for another season. And as the SPCA tries to come up with creative ideas for fundraising throughout the year, it's now joined forces with Donate a Car Canada. Yeah, really pleased. It ha uh, we've had, I think, two or three donations so far, so people are starting to hear about it. Thanks for joining us here today. As spring seeding gets underway across the province, Sask Power is reminding producers to stay clear of overhead power lines. Each year, numerous farm-related power line accidents occur across the province. And in 2018, 300 such accidents were reported, an increase of 40 from the previous year. Growing numbers, which are a concern to Sask Power, as these types of occurrences are easily preventable. The really big one is uh, really taking a moment before you go about your uh, daily task to uh, take a look around and be aware of your surroundings. So uh, if you're about to climb up into the cab of your machinery, it's a matter of just uh, taking a couple seconds to look around, uh, identify those overhead power lines and make sure that you're aware of them during the course of your work that day. Uh, you know, whether it is a yard that you've been working in for 50 years, uh, your very own farmyard, in fact, or a field uh, that you're maybe working in for the very first time, it's important to do that each and every time. Also make sure you're taking a few breaks throughout the day and preventing fatigue and that sort of thing. Especially, uh, you know, it was a little bit different situation this year, but for example, last year we had such a late spring, so there was a lot of sort of uh, rush perhaps behind getting that crop in the ground. And uh, regardless of the situation, it's just a matter of taking a moment to identify those hazards and uh, taking care of yourself out there so you're, you're aware of your surroundings as well. And if you do find yourself in a situation where your vehicle or farm equipment has come in contact with a power line and you're unable to drive away, there's a few steps you need to follow. Stay in your cab and call SAS Power at 310-2220 uh, or 911. Now, the uh, other thing that can happen uh, is it might not be safe for you to stay in your cab. For example, say the electricity has caused a, a fire uh, on your machinery and uh, it isn't safe for you to be there. You do need to get out of your machinery. So uh, after making sure there's really no wires in your way, uh, open your door, cross your arms, put your feet together. Don't touch uh, the side of, uh, of the machine you're op uh, machinery you're operating upon possible and then jump as far as way as you can. Uh, just always assume that those lines are conducting electricity. Uh, there may not be, you know, a, a, a clear sign that they are. There might not be sparks or anything to that effect, but you should be treating those lines as though they are because sometimes it's not always obvious. More information on electrical safety and the steps to follow in case of an emergency are available online. This is the time of the year that allergy sufferers dread. And in this report, we have a few tips to help get you through the season. Mold and other allergens are in abundance this time of the year and will increase in the coming months as the trees start to bloom for another season. And depending on the types of symptoms you suffer from, allergies can range in degree on a daily basis. With health experts offering the following advice. So in the outdoors, certainly when, when we get into the warmer weather, a lot of... Um, uh, what we call allergens or particles that could have caused uh, allergy are kept uh, under the snow uh, or very much to the ground. But as the weather warms up, we get certainly a lot more dusts being uh, flared up and we're also walking a lot more out there and into grass and stuff like that. So certainly people who are prone to allergies uh, will experience more allergies as the weather warms up. The other side of the coin is indoors. The you know it's really important to do a good um, you know carpet cleaning because a lot of those carpets can harbor uh, things like mites, which also promote um, further uh, allergies. And uh, same with with any compounds that uh, are causing allergies from the outside will be easily brought indoors now, with a lot more of that uh, openness of, of allergies on the ground. 
You can also take further steps in your home by using a vacuum with a HEPA filter and frequently changing furnace or air conditioning filters. And along with taking over-the-counter medications to help you deal with your allergies, there's a few other steps to keep in mind. It's hard to minimize your time outside, but remember that when you are, when you are outside and you come back inside, you are carrying some of those uh, allergy stimulants not only on your body but on your clothing so it may be wise when you come in to have those clothes washed so that you can get those products off and also for you to take a good shower so that you take um, the, the products off especially when the pollen starts going around a lot of people will have it in the hair and not even realize it and so when they go to sleep they are breathing in uh, again the same products because it's right there in their hair. More information on dealing with allergies are available through your local pharmacist or your physician's office. We know in, in the work we do with bird life that unless you consult local people, unless you work with them, you will fail. I'm Louise Cook. I'm a landscape painter and my association is with art placement in Saskatoon. I tend to like uh, rural landscape and edges of things. Uh, edges of farms, edges of the road, edge of a creek, um, edge of the horizon, that kind of thing. That's what I look at first. I usually take uh, a watercolor kit with me when I'm traveling, some sort of a sketchbook. So I sort of document that way as I go along, bring things back to the studio. And in the studio, it's basically, it's large oil paintings, uh, larger oil paintings than the little one here. It is from a provincial park. I talked about edges, that I'm always interested in edges. And that is a, a good example of edges. You have um, a calm sky, you have a little bit more activity in a lake or the water, and then comes the edge. And the edge is the land, and it has to do with the complications of what lives and what grows and what sort of exists right beside the water edge in a provincial park. I'm very interested in the natural world and botany and that kind of thing. They're mostly fireweed, um, dogwood, red dogwood, but the other one is Phragmites. And Phragmites is somewhat of an invasive species, but it's beautiful to look at. It's wonderful, it moves in the wind, and that's why I painted it. <laughs> so it's quite complicated, one side and the other side is more calm. A lot of artists are sort of maintained at a certain price level. But like anything else, um, there's popularity in there, and there's appreciation, and there's also good press. <laughs> and people are drawn to things that uh, um, they think that, it, that is important, and other people think that is important. And, and we're all put together that way. Um, I like where I am right now. It's something that's a collaboration between the artist and the art dealer. And um, they're very good at setting uh, that kind of value. I mean, they do uh, assessments of estates, all, all sorts of things like that. So they know exactly where things of a particular artist fit. Art in many ways is something that is, it moves throughout um, throughout the decades. Sometimes it's modern art, sometimes it's more of a realistic band, sometimes it's landscape, sometimes it's anything but landscape. So these things sort of have their life and then they move on. But hopefully I have experienced that certain things of a certain value maintain their value and it moves along, it moves along with you. Well, if you have an old vehicle rusting away in your backyard, the Swift Current SBCA is asking you to consider donating it for a good cause. 
The SWIFT current SBCA offers shelter to numerous pets throughout the year. And while offering this transition into their forever home, costs for its day-to-day -day operations are a challenge as the SPCA relies solely on donations from the community. No provincial or federal funding at all, and we're not funded by the Saskatchewan SPCA either, which is something that I think not everyone knows. We do operate as separate organizations with different mandates. So um, we do what we can do with the community support, and we're really pleased with what happened in 2018. So a big thank you to the community, not only for the donations, but it was also a really busy year for us with 425 plus pets served through the shelter so the other big thank you is to the community for coming and adopting pets from us because that allows us more capacity for more pets to come in. And as the SPCA tries to come up with creative ideas for fundraising throughout the year, it's now joined forces with Donita Car Canada. Yeah, really pleased. It ha uh, we've had, I think, two or three donations so far, so people are starting to hear about it. And uh, what it is is an opportunity for people to get rid of old clunkers, basically cars that are sitting around that you just want moved, um, and we can make arrangements through our partnership with Donate a Car Canada for them to come take the car, um, and there'd be a small donation from the scrap metal for that vehicle, and that comes to the SPCA, and we're able to provide a charitable receipt for the value of that. So just another interesting way that people can help us out. To find out more information about the Donita Car Canada program, log on to the Swift Current SBCA's website or give them a call directly. Well, this brings to a close another episode of Southwest TV News, reporting the stories that matter to you. We always welcome your news tips. You can always reach us here by phone at our studio or by email to contact us at southwesttvnews.com. Also, be sure to join us daily online for the latest news from across southwest Saskatchewan and so much more at southwesttvnews.com. And be sure to follow us on a range of social media. Thanks for joining us here today. I'm Carol Andrews.